Hey guys, Mater here. I'm out here at Big O and found a couple of guys that run some unusual cars. I want them to explain uh, who they are and uh, what the cars are. My name is Matt Ryan. This is Alan Lindau. We are Team Solo Auto. Uh, this is a 54 Chevy dressed like a checker cab. He has already loaded up his car, but he's rocking a Beetle of... There you go. It's on the shirt. Yeah. Volkswagen Beetle, LS powered, still fuel injected, all that good stuff. Pretty unique little bug for sure. Seems to be a fan favorite. So where do y'all normally run at? Uh, we don't have a normal anywhere, so we just travel all over. We get invited by uh, track owners, promoters. Uh, we had, I think we got invited like six or seven different tracks this year. So we just kind of all over the place right now. And you know, we came out here, you know, talked to Jim out here, and he's excited to have us out. So right. So we uh, we built these cars to do endurance racing. A couple years back, we had a, a 10 race season of 2018. 2018, as we were going to these races, several uh, across the country, I think there was like six or seven <clears throat> tracks that shut down on us. Um, so just by happenstance, we went out to Chatham one night to do some testing before a, uh, an endurance race. And uh, normally we'd go out and, you know, they'd let us run some hot laps or whatever, and then, you know, we wouldn't be able to run the race. Well, this track owner, you know, it was the first time we'd ever been there. He goes, nah, I want to see these cars on the track. Y'all are racing tonight. So we did that, and after that, we started kind of just traveling around promoting racing, and just in general, you know, as a sport, because uh, we kind of see it declining, which is unfortunate. I mean, the right. biggest race we promote is the Lone Star 600. That's what the cars are built for. Brad Dixon and Jack Barfield, they do an excellent job with that race, and we go around promoting them. We get flyers from them, and we'll hand them out at the races. Talk to tons of people about it. So right, and that's yeah. over at uh, Devil's Bowl Speedway that's in Mesquite. Devil's Bowl, that, last weekend, as a matter of fact. Right, so. and actually, the little Volkswagen led the first 50 laps on Friday night, so <laughs> had some problems, and then Matt finished uh, 18th on Saturday. So 20th uh, overall, 22nd, 160 cars, I think, total, or something like that, what they had this year. So wow, 90 uh, entries, I think 160 something showed up. 160 on a half mile dirt track. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All wow. All that was probably really packed out there. It was pretty wild. It, for a while. I think once uh, once you're about 150 laps in, they were probably down to, what, 50 cars, 60 yeah, cars? Like I mean, and they'll come off and go on, but a rolling average, probably around 50 or 60 cars once the race really gets going. Right. Um, it, it'll thin out kind of the, the weak ones out of the herd pretty quick. You know, okay. Wrecks, you know, wrecks, wrecks, wrecks do happen. So. Wrecks will take out some of the strongest cars, you know. Oh, yeah, that, that's something normal because, like I said, I used to do that years ago out here at Big O. Of course, at that time it was known as 85 Speedway. Right. But, uh, yeah, I'd love to get back into it, but, man, it's it's so expensive. I, I, I don't have deep enough pockets for the money. <laughs> it can be, that's for sure. That's well, right. That's where your fans come in, you know, if you're lucky enough to round out some sponsors, which we don't. We have some sponsors. They help us with things, but not really financially, you know. Right. I, that's that's one one goal we're trying to have for next year is you know get some get some bigger sponsors and stuff like that. You know, I mean, we, we're, our cars are very popular, highly noticed. You know, I mean, right. I think sponsors would love to have their name on cars where we get to travel around and do stuff like this. You know, I mean, right. cause they're fan favorite cars. You know, every, anywhere we go. Right. Well, he was explaining to me earlier about uh, your car. You want to uh, explain you know, how you got that built? Uh, it started out as like a Delta 88 big body car and uh, from, from scratch, shorten the frame down to 96 inches, which is what our rules are from Lone Star 600. Narrowed the rear end. I narrowed the rear end. Instead of running the eight and a half rear end, I had seven and a half rear ends from uh, running my factory stock days. So, and they're easier to get parts for if you do break something. So right. I narrowed the rear end and everything. I mean, I built that car from the ground up and there's a lot of labor in it. Yeah, there's no there's no uh, kit ordered roll cage in that thing or this thing. I mean, I right. have roll cage that goes all the way out into the fenders and rolls with the fenders just to help protect, you know, the fenders and right. the car, you know. I mean, well, you took a uh, stock uh, bug body and widened it just to make yeah, it fit on there. I, I gutted the whole body out and I split it down the middle and took sheet metal and filled it all back in to make it still look like it's somewhat of a bug shape. and. Right. Which a lot of people I've talked to, they didn't even notice it. You know, they only notice it it's, it's 12 <laughs> inches wider. Exactly, 12 inches wider. <laughs> that was fun watching y'all out there. I mean, when I seen y'all come out there on the track tonight, it's like, oh man, we got some classic cars coming out. 
Well, and that's that's kind of the goal, really, right? I mean, that's that's kind of the goal of what we're doing, you know. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, dirt track racing kind of stopped progressing in the '90s, and we're still running the same G bodies we've been running for 40 years. I mean. Let's face it, somebody in their 20s, they probably has never even seen that car. Factory stock, nothing. They've never seen one of those on the road. Right. You know what I mean? So I'd really like to see people read the rules first off. It says A stock body on A stock chassis. So get creative out there. Oh, yeah. Go go pick you a fun and interesting body and stuff it on there. Don't look like the rest of the schmucks out here. And, right. You know, I mean, a we, got, we, got, we go to these races, you know, for show at this point. You know, cause we're not legal cars for any of the classes, but the owners love it because it's different cars, because the fans have different. I hope we put a good show on for everybody. I know there are some several sketchy moments in me and that bug. You know, he's on two wheels several times down there in turn three and four. And, right. Yeah, you know, I puckered up a few times. Well, I know that one time uh, you uh, spun out there in uh, turn two, and um, I heard the announcer saying, "Well, he must have uh, uh, found somebody to give a ride to." <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, but the last that. That last race was so slick, the car just wasn't set up right. It was just, it was terrible. I actually tur I turned off the taxi cab sign partway through the race. <laughs> Not taking fares no more. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what he said. He probably stopped picking up a fare over there yep. Yep. at turn two. Yeah, no, the, tonight's uh, factory stock race, it was, it was really slick. The car, neither one of our cars were set up right for it. We're kind of set up for bigger tracks. So right. There wasn't anything we could do at the track that was going to fix that short of changing some front springs, but I'm not doing that for one night. It's just too much work. I mean, we still, we still had a blast. You know, we weren't we weren't registered in the Thunderstock race with Jim Moon. You know, he told us, man, if y'all want to race it, go ahead. You know, go have some fun. You know, and so we decided to jump out there in the feature. You know, we started in the back, like I think it was like 13th, 14th. You know, when there were how many cars that showed up out there. And, we blasted our way up there pretty quick, you know, and they kept putting us in the back under caution, but still by the end of the race, I think I ended up fourth and Matt ended up seventh, so All it was right. still a blast, you know, put a good show on. I know, like I said, you know, when I used to race out here, you know, we only had three classes. We only had the, uh, they had street stock, economy late model, and modifieds. And street stock was basically, take a factory car, had to be 1960 or newer, 115 uh, inch wheelbase, and basically run a stock engine. Right. I mean, we would get 50, 60 cars in that one class alone. Right. And that started back for me back in 85. Right. And see, you hit the nail on the head though, right? You said you used to go to the junkyard and get a motor? Yeah. <laughs> you ain't going to the junkyard now and getting a oh, no. 350. You're just not gonna, I mean, what are you gonna get out of the junkyard now? An LS motor. Right. Which is what factory stock should be running today. Right. Pull out truck motors. You can buy them all day long for 800 bucks or 325 horsepower. I remember going, you know, buying, you know, like my first car, uh, actually my second one, uh, I picked it up from a junkyard from a guy that did race. And I think I paid maybe $100 for the whole car. And I even I pulled the motor out, didn't do anything to the transmission, pulled the motor out, actually took it over to Jimmy Allard. And for a hundred dollars, they, you know, cleaned the block, honed it, and everything, and got it ready. You know, did the crank. You're not going to find that anymore. No. I mean, to, I mean, I had maybe a thousand dollars in the entire car. That's yeah. motor, roll cage, everything. You, the only way you're getting that now is buying somebody's old race car. I mean, right. that's the reality. You're not going to go out buy a donor car, oh, put a motor together. Oh, you're not doing all that. For right. Cheap. You know, if you buy somebody's kind of raggedy old factory stock that's been beat up pretty good, yeah, you can get them pretty cheap, twelve, fifteen hundred bucks for a roller. Right. But you know, you're kind of getting used up stuff. You know. Yeah. Unfortunately. I mean, the, the days of going to the junkyard and pulling a car out of it are kind of gone. I mean, it kind of went away when they stopped building full frame cars. The last was what the Crown Vix. That was the last of the full frame cars, sedans. Yeah. So. And nowadays, if you want to go find the older cars and everything, you're you know, oh, you want to buy Monte Carlo? Oh, you're gonna pay at least you know two, three thousand for one. That's right. And that's you know, that's the one that's in decent shape. So as far as finding one, you know, to build, you're not gonna find them. No, they're hard to find. So I don't know. I, it's gotta, it's gotta, it's gotta update to some degree. You know, factory stock has to update to some degree. Which I think that's why those stingers are really taking off though. That's kind of your new factory stock class. I mean, that's really the new. The four-cylinder front-wheel drives, 
but tech people got to figure out the rules there. They're very confused on the whole variable cam timing thing. Right. Outlaw and Hondas, but not Ecotax, they all have variable cam timing. You're not buying a four-cylinder car past 2010 that doesn't have variable cam timing. Right. So, but, I don't know, it's a learning curve, and, and dirt track world seems to just be a little bit behind the curve for some reason. Right. Yeah, because there's a factory huh? stock. Grandma's, grandma's in the car? <laughs> Alright. Yeah, and that's one thing I've noticed about with the factory stocks nowadays, or even, you know, the uh, Thunder cars they've got out here, that, you know, you look at them, and they're not even a stock body anymore. No. Uh, most of the guys will take, you know, and build, they'll take the complete body off the frame and build the roll cage and everything on that and then reskin the whole car and they're not even using a factory sheet metal. No. No. Nope. Nope. Very few cars you see that's got a stock body on it anymore. And see that was the thing about when I was racing, it had to be a totally stock body. Correct. I mean the problem is being able to come up with stock body. Right. Right? So so that's where that's where you have to start like changing the way we look at dirt track. Because oh, yeah. I, I I'm unfortunately here's the thing. I get bored going to the dirt track and looking at the same G-body looking cars that are all fake, they're all fake because they're all running aftermarket sheet metal they bought. Right. Or your limiteds and your modifieds, which are just wedges. They're just little wedges running around the track. You know, right. it's not it's not that entertaining. It gets kind of old, you know. And don't get me wrong, you get some good racing and whatnot. So, so you can't say it's not entertaining. They make they have good racing. It's they, just that everybody's seen the same cars. But, but for your but for your Joe Schmuck, right, to get them to the track, right? They, they want to see kind of some different shit, you know? I mean, we, we've heard it personally from people that when we go to a track, there's people that have brought people that's never been to a dirt track. Right. Just, just because they tell them about our cars, you know, because they've seen them out there or whatever. And they'll bring somebody out that's never been. Yeah. Right. You know, and I mean, that's, what, that's our goal, you know, to bring people in the stands because we don't want to see the dirt track shut down. Right. I mean, because we've seen a lot of them over the past couple of years. No. And you know, it you know, like I said, normally, you know, I don't go out and do an interview with the drivers and everything after the race, but because of the cars y'all brought out tonight, it's like that's something that was unique and different. It's like, no, I want to go and talk to these guys right. and find out about their vehicles. They're definitely different for sure. They, they definitely are. I mean, like your car, it definitely, you know, brings back memories. Yeah, this would be this would be pretty similar to what you would have seen in the late '50s for like a modified. Right. It's kind of what you'd see, uh, minus the front fenders, '50s car, or severely cut down. I see a lot of guys who cut them down, like, like right in here. Oh yeah. That's what we noticed though too is most of your older generation of people, they get more drawn to mats, or everything below that. They all love the bug. Oh, the right. kids, the kids the, love yeah, the bug. Yeah, the kids love the bug. And the tiger hanging off the back of it, you know. That's, they want to pet the tiger all the time, you know. So. I heard a lot of that tonight. Oh, yeah. I mean, the thing is, the thing is, in general, with dirt tracking, we see it as kind of a sport that's somewhat declining. It goes through its stages, but it's somewhat declining. And, you know, drivers need to interact with the fans. We got to, you got it's a show. At the end of the day, it's a show, and you can't be so focused on winning that you forget it's a show. Because as a collective, what you end up with is these guys fighting on fist fighting on the track over over what a hundred fifty dollar purse? Are you kidding me, right? Like we're supposed to be here having fun. We're putting on oh, yeah. a show for fans. You know, that's the one thing I don't understand is you know with um, like in the factory stock. I mean, when I first found out about it a few years back, I mean. It's like really that's you know there's nothing stock you know factory stock about the car you know and these guys go out and they're spending like five six thousand dollars for an engine yep it's a, it's a limited mod with a stock car body is what it looks right. like right and like i said you know and what's the carburetor you got to run you got to run a holly right 500 okay up like this when i ran no hollies at all you quad couldn't jets. you could run a quadra jet it could be a, a carter you know but Holly, no. Even if the car came with it from the factory, no, you could right. not run that. You had to run something else. Bro, I don't. I don't want quadra junk to come back. I don't like those. <laughs> you don't want a quad quadra junk? No, man. I won't even work on those in my shop. I love. I love mine. You know how to work on them and how to set them up. They work great. Carters are pretty good. Well, I mean, that's just like running Edelbrock. Yeah. I mean, an Edelbrock carburetor today is the Carter. 8D. Right. Well, because Edelbrock actually did buy out. 
Carter. Carter. Yes. So anything you find that says Little Brock is actually a it's a Carter just rebranded. Yep. Yep. That's a fact. That's a fact. Well, guys, I know y'all got a long night still ahead of you because y'all got a long He's way to go. Here. I'm rolling home, so I got the longer night. <laughs> Well, guys, I appreciate it. You know, I know it's taking a little bit, you know, out of your time and everything tonight. But oh, man, I, man, I sure do appreciate y'all, yeah, you know, doing this for me. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, y'all take care. Until next time, Mater out. Appreciate it.